hello hello Instagram hello Facebook great morning great morning to you this is Tina C. Hyde your life transformation specialist um, I I was sharing on on Facebook and I said well, wait a minute let me come over here and share with my people on Instagram a, a certain message a message of the emotional weight that we carry What's always interesting is um, when I think about weight, and most people, they prefer to focus on physical weight. And uh, that's not the beginning culprit of your weight gain. The beginning culprit of your weight gain is emotional weight. And while some of you, there are a lot of people, it's that day, that February 14th, and you're like, Tina, you're supposed to be coming in here talking about love and self-love and all this stuff. You know, all the hearts and all that great stuff. And first of all, we love ourselves 24-7. We don't need February 14th to make us aware of when we should be loving on ourselves and when we should love other people. So, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> and, um... Now, now we, 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 now we about to go somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to be on here too long because I, um, I got shit to do. But I woke up this morning and the first thing, the first word that came to mind was weight. And when I started thinking about weight, it was not just physical weight. It was the emotional weight that so many of us carry. So many women carry. I mean, I know the fellas going to peep in. It's like, you're always talking about women. Women are my peoples. I feel your shit. I don't want to feel your shit, but I feel your shit. And so, as I was uh, processing why my grandma Jenny gave me this word this morning, I'm like, okay, girl, where are we going today? Because you always give me a word to share. Uh, with people and we talk about and she said wait and I'm like well you know wait what wait to do this we gonna wait for something should I be sitting here waiting and she's like no 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 I ain't talking about you waiting because you know I be moving you I am talking about weight the weight that we carry okay are you talking about the physical weight because you know I know I a couple of more pounds I'm almost there I got a couple of more to go no I'm not talking about physical weight I'm talking about the emotional weight the shit that happened last week the shit that happened last month the shit that happened last year five years ten years fifteen years ago that for some ungodly reason, many of us, we don't know how to release it with love. Let it go, for, for those people who don't know what I mean. And what happens is, it wreaks havoc on your body. It causes you some emotional trauma. It causes you some dis-ease. And you are, <laughs> wait a minute, face, wait a minute, Instagram, my Facebook people over here talking about you glowing. <laughs> what do you want from me? I glow. I've gotten used to it. Um, so you, you're carrying all of this emotional weight. And what happens is the emotional weight transcends to physical weight. And oftentimes, we, we keep questioning, why, why can't I get rid of the physical weight? What's going on that I just can't get rid of these pounds? Why is my, my belly so big? Why are my thighs so big? Why is my butt so voluptuous? You know, why my breast is so well endowed? You know, all of these things, when you want to reduce them, and you may try various facets to do it, but the one area that most people choose not to work on is their emotional weight. And most people will say, no, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. It, 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 it has nothing to do with what's going on in my life. I call that bullshit. I, I do. I call it bullshit. Because 
Your physical weight does have a lot to do with your emotional weight because sometimes people will say, well, I just do emotional eating. I, I eat when I'm going through something. Well, that's a trigger. And so you're going through an emotional period in your life. You choose to consume food, consumption of the food of the not so good food half the time can ultimately results in the weight gain. And so you have to ask yourself, what am I going to do differently to start releasing my emotional weight? How can I shift this up a little bit? What steps do I need to take? Am I willing to take them and stick with it? Because sometimes as soon as you feel just a little tingle of something feeling good, you all of a sudden go, I, I'm fine, I don't have to do shit else. What do you mean you don't have to do anything else? Well, I'm fine. Everything is good. I'm no longer feeling heavy. So I don't have to do nothing else. I call that bullshit too. Because you have, this, is, this is not um, when I'm hurting, I'm going to work on it work. Or when shit hits the fan, I'm going to work on it work. Or something don't feel right, I'm going to work on it work. This is everyday work for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's every day consistently doing something in your life that, that, that alleviates the, the emotional trauma that you are experiencing in your life. It doesn't have to be on the grand scale. It can be the most minute thing, but it is something that you are doing to work on you. This has nothing to do with your children. It has nothing to do with your husband, your wife, your boo thing, whoever she is, whoever he is. It has nothing to do with them and everything to do with you because you have to be willing to work on you and you have to be willing to continue to work on you because every now and then remnants of your messiness, your emotional pain decides that it wants to creep back in again and be like, hey, remember me? I'm still over here hanging out. Don't forget about me. And you're like, oh shit, here we go again. But when you're consistently working on it, when it comes towards you, it's like, oh, wait a minute. I've seen this movie. I, I know how it ended. It don't end pretty. Let me fix this. And you start gaining the skills to start shifting shit up in your lives. You know, I, I, th this morning, it, it's amazing how the universe just be like, I'm gonna put some shit in front of you because I need to remind you of some things. And so the woman where, uh, let, me, let me give a plug here. It's called The Love Box on Instagram. D-A-L-U-V-B-O-X. The Love Box. That's what's the culprit of all this little hair growth up here. So that's her plug. Y'all go follow her. You get some of her hair care products. So she sent me a message this morning. I, I had sent her. I said, you know, somebody's referring. To, I'm referring someone to you. Blah, blah, blah. And she responded back. And then she said to me, you know... I follow you, you, your stories on Instagram. They're short, sweet, and to the point. And um, your little reels. Short, sweet, to the point. And she said, you don't know the impact that you're making in the lives of people. I just do what I'm supposed to do. That, that, I'm, honestly, when people say that to me, I... I, I just do what I'm supposed to do, what I was guided to do. A lot of my pain and my problems that I had experienced in my life, it was preparation for those women and men that I am supposed to be connecting with. And so she said, you never know, you know, who's listening to you at that very moment. And somehow your message, it speaks to them. 
those are your unknown. And I appreciate you. And I'm laying in my bed, listening to our audio and thinking, thanks. All right. And then I um I go to my empath page. And on there, there, and, and mind you, I, I'm not on that page a lot. I don't share a lot on there. I've been kind of ignoring it. And there's a woman on there. She sends me a message and she says, I don't know how I found you, but there's something on your page that the, the energy that you exude, it's like, everybody write the word, peace. It's like peace. And I need your help because I'm an infant. And then she started, you know, dump, dumping like most people do. And as I'm reading what she shared, I'm sitting in my, laying in my bed, chilling, thinking. And she says, this is where I started thinking. She said, I want to get to where you are. I, w I want that. I want that look of peace on my face. I want to, I want that, if, uh, I'm, I want that. <laughs> and I'm sitting here processing of how I'm going to respond to her. And this message is not just for her, which I wrote. This message is for you as well. So everybody always shows up at the right time. Y'all know here come y'all girl, right? <laughs> Welcome, Grandma Jenny. When you want something, you have to ask yourself, how much am I willing to put into getting what I desire to have? How long am I willing to stay on the journey? Because, y'all, yeah, I'm 52. This journey has been like 12 years, maybe a little longer. 12 years that I know of. It started before. 12 years. Twelve years of crying. Twelve years of setbacks. Twelve years of shit just not going right in my life. It's been twelve years. Somewhere in between there, there were some highs to make sure I kept going. And some lows to remind me of the highs. Twelve years. Somewhere in there, there were some lessons. But I'm like, those some lessons I don't want to learn. I'm good. You don't got to teach me them. And you definitely don't got to teach me them again. I got it. But there's always these little reminders that we seem to ignore, dismiss, somewhere in there. And when people say, I want that, I, I want to do that, I want to feel that, I want to go there, my mind says, oh, you do, huh? Because listen, if I let you in here, you're going to be hanging with my grandma and them. And every, it ain't always pleasant. Sure, sure ain't. It's not always pleasant. Because I'm always in school. But in order to obtain the clarity to hear the peace is important. Sometimes I hear people ask, what is it that I can't 
get clarity on, on certain things in my life. Why am I struggling? Very simple. You're not allowing yourself to get quiet to hear. You got a lot of busyness going on around you. You got a lot of people in your head, in your ears, on your shoulders. You're watching television and some of the not so good shit. You're listening to music. Some Okay, every now and then I got DMX on my mind. Okay, I digress. You're, you're listening to things. What are you pouring into you? What are you reading? What are you journaling? Because you're going to have to be willing to release some of that not so good shit in your life in order to create the space for the good shit to come. Good shit is like, um, there doesn't look like there's any space for me to come in there. Because you're still holding on to that shit. So what? He or she left you. You still standing. So what? So what? You failed at certain things. Who gives a crap? Because you're still standing. You've been as successful at everything. See, we, team, we tend to harp on the not so good shit that has happened in our lives instead of focusing on the good stuff that should be overshadowing. Ten things could be happening in your life. Nine of them could go right. One of them can go wrong. And you're so focused on the wrong thing that it supersedes the right things that happen. Yet and still, you want peace. Something I've often shared is our lives are not complicated. We make our lives complicated. Our lives are not complicated. We make them complicated. We feel the need, ladies, this is for y'all fellas. Y'all can go ahead and clap and agree. Give me some hearts on this. Ladies, y'all got to pick at every damn thing. It's just in your nature. You, you gotta be, you, you, you just, y'all just be fighting a war with everything in your life. And God forbid if you be like, I retreat, I'm good. It's not worth my time nor my energy. No, y'all going in. And then you're so concerned about why things are, why am I feeling so bad or why am I so angry? You walk around with a shitload of anger in your Louis Vuitton bag. And when somebody tries to be nice to you or compliment you or just smile at you, your stank ass attitude that you carry with you that happened from somebody else, you transition it to somebody who had nothing to do with it. Why am I going to get upset without Frida when Sissy Girl pissed me off? And why am I going to say the devil is busy when sissy girl pissed me off? Uh, no, a friend didn't do nothing to me. And sissy girl is not the devil. Sissy girl is sissy girl. I'm giving ownership to who it belongs to. And y'all need to stop doing that. And for those of you who are mamas, that shit rolls over to your children, your stank ass attitude. And you're wondering why I can't attract what I desire. Why is it so hard for me to attract the abundance in my life? I mean, listen, there are some occasions, rare occasions, when serves a purpose. 
when that strength in your back serves a purpose. But you do not have to lip, lash out your tongue at any given moment. Sometimes when we do that, we can't even hear what we need to hear. Recently, I was sharing something of, I found on Instagram a picture and it said, when I get quiet, get scared. When I get quiet, I stop listening to you because you can no longer hear me. If we are ever in a discussion and it happens to get a tidbit heated and the person is starting to talk over me, I shut up. I shut up. I no longer need to prove a point because the person can't hear me. They continuously talk without breathing. They can't hear you. They have a rebuttal for everything that you say. They can't hear you. So why allow them to disrupt your peace? It's a choice. And I came to the conclusion many years ago, my peace, my well-being is non-negotiable and my priority. And if it's ever impacted by another person, I need to detach myself from that person. I need to love you from back here if I loved you. See, a lot of us don't do that. Single ladies, single ladies, single ladies with children. Where y'all at? Single ladies with children. My baby is 34 years old. The person whose last name he carries was probably an amazing part of his life, not on his side, about this much. But here's the thing I've always vowed I would never, ever do. Because it wasn't about me, it wasn't about him, it was about that little person that I was raising into a man. I never dogged his dad out, and I could have. I could have. But that would transcend over here. That would be anger. That would be bitterness. I, 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 I choose not to carry that weight on me. I choose not to be angry and bitter that our situation didn't work out. And for those who came after me, I choose, I chose, <laughs> I embraced half of them. Because you know what? It had nothing to do with me. Those of you who have children and you're not part of the other person's life any longer, why y'all still holding on to shit? What purpose does it serve you? Seriously, does it serve you any purpose? 
of being anger, angry and bitter with that person. I'm going to like you from back here. You don't have to be a part of my life. You don't have to be a part of my life. It's a choice. Whatever happened in your past, it may have only happened one time, but you are allowing it to happen multiple times because you keep putting it on replay. It's like, let me press that button for the people who do records. Let me put that record on replay. For the CD, let me, let me put that, that song on repeat. And it just keeps going and going and going. You, you can remember stuff. You got, you, you got details. Hell, you even created some additional stories to go along with it. It happened once. And you're still carrying it for 10, 15, 20 years, allowing it to continuously happen to you and impact every area of your life. And we keep asking ourselves, why can't we get ahead? Why do I feel like I keep getting pushed back? Because you keep going back. There's something back there you like or love that you keep going back there trying to get it. For those people who have felt abandoned by their parents or by whomever, there's something you keep going back there trying to get. Can they give it to you? And if they do, will you be receptive of it? Or are you so angry that you say to yourself, well, you should have did it back then. I just stepped on some toes. You cannot change anything that has happened beyond the present moment. You can try, but you can't change it. The only thing you can do is take the lesson from it and as you go forward, do things in your life, act differently in your life, think differently in your life as you go forward. That's it. And we hope that it makes you a better person instead of, instead of a bitter person. You want to attract some shit in your life? No, I mean, seriously, you want to attract some shit in your life. I'm going to let you in on a secret. And it's really not a secret. dragonfly and a dragonfly is about transformation it's about mental and emotional maturity when you allow yourself to go through a transformation growth, the emotional weight baggage in your Louis Vuitton, all those rocks, sand, pebbles, pieces of paper, receipts, will start to dissipate. The secret. Releasing with love. I don't release nothing with hate. I'm going to release you with love. I'm going to release a situation with love. I'm going to burn it. I'm going to bury it. I'm going to walk in the ocean and allow it to seep through my feet and release it and put it out there in the ocean. 
but I'm not going to let it hold on to my body. I'm not carrying that. It's heavy. Get quiet. Sit your ass down a little bit. And just be. You don't got to be doing anything. Just be. Stillness. Peace. Whatever it is that you desire, you can have it. You just have to ask yourself how bad do you want it and are you willing to put in the work to get it. Some of you have been in relationships, jobs, long time. Can you work on your emotional well-being for that same amount of time? Can you make yourself a priority for that same amount of time? You only have to prove anything to one person. And that's the person you look at. 365 days a year. That's it. You want to get rid of some physical weight? It's going to require you to start working towards releasing the emotional weight. It's going to require you to say yes to your healing. And trust me, the journey is worth it. It is so worth it. As I always conclude my messages, everything you have is in your comfort zone. Everything you want is outside of your comfort zone. Just remember, everything you have, it was once outside of your comfort zone. If I can ever be of service to you, you can go to tmlcvines.com and schedule your consultation. You can start releasing this emotional weight. Have an amazing day. Filled with peace.